My name is Richard Holden. I'm a professor of economics at UNSW Business School. and I'm also a fellow of the Academy of Social Sciences in Australia. The Nobel Prize in Economics is the most prestigious award that a professional economist can win. And as it's part of Nobel Week, as it's known, uh, it, it creates amazing media attention around the world. And it is remarkable in its ability to draw attention to the scholarly contributions and also the contributions to the world of the researchers who were awarded the prize. It's uh, often a platform for them to talk about interesting causes uh, in the profession or broader issues in the economy that they're interested in. So Paul Krugman is a New York Times uh, columnist who received the uh, Nobel Prize for his work on trade theory, but that's given him even more credibility to talk about all kinds of matters economic. Uh, and as we'll talk about for this year's recipients, uh, who are younger than the typical recipients, it'll be a real platform for them uh, to get their ideas out to a broader audience for many years to come. So this year's Prize in Economic Sciences was awarded to three scholars, Abhijit Banerjee from MIT, Esther Duflo, also at MIT, and Michael Kramer, who's an economics professor at Harvard University, all within two T-stops in Cambridge, Massachusetts from each other. But they work in the field of development economics, looking at what policies can help alleviate poverty in the developing world. The work that Esther and Abhijit and Michael did has had huge practical significance in helping understand what policies work to alleviate poverty, but it's also brought a new method to economics, to development economics and beyond that. And their method is to use randomised controlled trials to understand what policies are effective. So what these three scholars did was take this idea from pharmaceutical trials and transplant it to figuring out what works for poverty alleviation. So what they could do was take a potential intervention and randomly assign it to some members of the population and compare their outcomes to the control group, the rest of the population. And so that could be, for instance, putting more inputs into schools, comparing to changing how those inputs are used within schools. And what that allows is to identify the true causal effect of a policy intervention, which is what you want to know if you're a policymaker.